Hello, Central family. My name is Matt Mazzoni, and I am the Director of Music and Worship here at Central. It is my pleasure to bring you this devotional today. Today is the first day of Lent, a period of roughly 40 days that leads to the events of Holy Week and Easter. It is a time for us to reset our spiritual lives that we may deeply grasp the meaning of death, of the death and resurrection of Jesus, and what that means for our souls and for our lives. Now, I grew up with Lent. I was raised in a Catholic home by parents who were and still are devout in their practice. But the religion I grew up with was exactly that, religion. In order to earn the blessing of God and the reward of heaven, I was to do the right things, and in the inevitable situation that I couldn't, I had to hope that God would make up the rest. It was very much living under the law, and Lent was a season that was just to try a little harder. This past Sunday, we explored Galatians 3, verses 7 to 14, and we were posed with the question, are we self-reliant or savior-reliant? On what do we rely? On what do we hope? Our self-reliant hustle is the currency of the world. Working the system correctly, whatever that system is, leads to power and wealth and influence and security. And the ultimate goal of all of it, I would suggest, is to be at peace and to find rest. The problem is that the peace promised from the world's path is only a mirage. We can't possibly work hard enough buy enough, achieve enough, or control enough to ever outrun our destiny. I personally relate to this very deeply with my own story. Not only did my Catholic faith tell me that I was supposed to practice my religion correctly to be right with God, but my university training as a musician reinforced exactly the same lesson. The cornerstone of any serious college music student is their weekly one-on-one -on -one lesson with their main professor. In order to prepare for this single hour of interaction, which admittedly is more one-on-one -on -one time than most college students get with any single professor, a serious student would be spending four or six or eight or more hours every day practicing their instrument. Seven days a week, four, six, eight hours a day, maybe more. Then, after such a gigantic investment of time in a one-hour lesson, you would present the fruit of your efforts by playing or singing or whatever it was for your professor. And if you played well and the lesson went well, you were really affirmed. You would be riding high with the hope that your future would be bright and your hopes and goals would come true. If it went poorly or the lesson didn't go well, you'd feel terrible about yourself and all of your future prospects. It only gets worse when you begin to take auditions that lead to jobs and further education. The only thing you control going in is how hard you worked. But there's never any guarantee that it'll be enough. For any reason whatsoever, it might not work out. And you could have always worked a little harder. And you know it'll never be enough, but you need to work harder. It is life under the law. And I rolled that roller coaster well into my young adult life. By the time I was in graduate school, I was getting tired of that roller coaster. I had given up on that point of Catholicism, but I was completely self-reliant. In fact, I was very proudly self-reliant. The future that I was striving for, which looked so enticing though, it still proved to be a mirage every time that roller coaster dipped down and eventually the lows had outweighed the highs. So one day in one of those low places, I had been complaining of a storm of despair and I was coming back to that same conclusion that I'd somehow have to find some way to just work a little harder and see if I could you know, make a crack in the door. I asked, it was asked a very simple and direct question by a strong Christian believer. You've met her, it's now Jennifer, it's my wife. She asked me, How's that working out for you? I knew the answer. It isn't. Living by the law will never work. Fortunately, there is another way. While we can't fulfill the law, Jesus can and did. All he asks is that we come with faith to him. When I did that, when I gave up my own works and put my full trust in Jesus, I finally knew a peace that surpasses all understanding. And while I'm not yet fully at rest, and none of us are in this world, I know that when my days come to the end, um, I will not have to fear. By grace, I am redeemed. The truth is that Jesus, no, sorry, the truth that Jesus can take our fears is also vital for our daily lives. Sin has marked this world with brokenness, and there is a lot to be deeply concerned about. We don't naturally have peace or rest, and apart from Jesus, we never will. But God has simple words for us in hard times. Words I think we need to hear. The psalmist wrote, From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. God spoke through prophecy and said, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. And Jesus himself taught, Which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to the span of his life? 
Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So wherever you are and whatever you are facing, I pray that you can all turn, we all can turn uh, every moment from our self-reliance and find the true path, rest, the true rest and true peace that comes from being reliant on Jesus today. Let's pray. Father, the weight of the world is far too much to bear without you. You ask us to give you our burdens, so move in our hearts that we may do that right now. We leave them with you and pray for your guiding hand to move in every situation that we face. We especially lift up to you the people of Ukraine and ask that you would put an end to that conflict through shining the light of your truth upon them. We pray that you would do the same in all the places where violence and unrest uh, persist. Lord, teach us to use our days wisely. Draw us to you that we may find our rest and our purpose always and only in you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name.